Bon qui qui je m'appelle Ross Twadell from Cultaholic.com and welcome to all these WTF moments for Friday Night Smackdown. A Smackdown that was okay, I thought, but every single match just about was so short when I got to the end of the show I could not remember most of what I'd just seen. They were that short, blink, and they were gone. This of course made for a show where plenty was happening throughout the night but of course this was a super smackdown where I'm going to superman punch superman Michael Cole shut up. And of course there was some dog food involved as well which we'll get on to later but of course at this time we must congratulate O for scoring a Valentine's Day date with M- Mandy. He's a god among men. Oh yeah, he might be coming! You're welcome. A WTF! A WTF! Once again to Michael Cole, to Elias and to every single person on this show who claimed we're on the road to WrestleMania. What can it be? We're in a pirate ship, a real pirate ship with real pirates and other nautical things. Unless of course this year's WrestleMania is going via Holland and we have access to that mad bastard thing there. It's a bus that can drive on the road and then go in the sea. It's amazing. So then we learned that this week's Smackdown was called a Super Smackdown in honour of Sunday's big, really cool, fantastic game of American football, yeah! But then we saw what the main event of the night was going to be and quite frankly, the supposed Super Smackdown should not have been called that because it, it shouldn't have been, should it? It should have been called reruns of Smackdown or the 24th of January Smackdown Squared or... <laughs> I mean, it is good, of course, but it's still the same, and it's there. And then we learned that the loser of the main event was going to have to eat some doggy food, and there it bloody well is. We've heard it for a long old while now. This is what Roman Reigns and big baldy bastard Baron Corbin have been doing at house shows. This was supposedly going to be the big stipulation match at the Royal Rumble, but no, we got it on this Super Smackdown. How fitting. And anyway, WWE, when you sit back and think about it, a man eating dog food is is not even that big of a punishment. How can I say that? Because we here at Cultaholic had the loser eating dog food as a stipulation in our Royal Rumble predictions competition. And guess what? It lost out to Tom Campbell keeping his tiny, pathetic, horrible shoed little feet off the floor for an entire day in the office. He had, he could have hopped. He still could have hopped. Why didn't he hop? It's not even that big of a deal, is it really? It couldn't even win our poll. I would eat dog food for breakfast. I'm being sarcastic, of course. I can't believe it didn't win. And then we have Michael Cole saying that Braun Strowman is in search of his first singles title in WWE. And I was left asking Michael Cole, what the hell about that greatest Royal Rumble lovely green belt that existed for a few weeks and then disappeared with no explanation? What about that? It's the most prestigious thing in all of WWE. Vince McMahon probably tells the people who pay him billions to stage that bollocks. And then we had Michael Cole calling Shinsuke Nakamura a long time intercontinental champion. And when he said that, I quite literally sat there at my desk out there and said, what? Oh, hell no. Huh? Hold up. You know how it goes now. And then I did a little bit of Googling, and I realized that, yeah, they were telling the truth on this week's SmackDown. Shinsuke Nakamura actually did win the Intercontinental Championship all the way back at Extreme Rules in July. And since then, which is like, you know, all the way back in July, that's a bloody long time ago, Shinsuke Kotnocker has only defended that thing four times, and one of those defences was on bloody Smackville, so it doesn't even count. That was his fifth defence since July, and he lost, and I was just thinking, just get rid of the Intercontinental Championship, it's clear we don't need it. If WWE needed this title, it would have been defended more than five times since July. July! July. It means nothing. The Lucha House Party is still on Smackdown. Well, I'll be damned. The Revival are still being used, even though they reportedly asked for their release from WWE last week once again. Well, I'll be damned. 
And then we have The Miz hitting the ultimate jackpot on this week's SmackDown. Imagine getting a full-on 69 perspective with Otis in the middle of a match where Otis is the second most sweaty Otis gets. The only sweatier Otis gets is when he's eating a massive meat. And I've had numerous sources from within WWE tell me that Miz has been calling upon the assistance of some heavy machinery of his own to not only cleanse his skin, but to cleanse his mind of the memory of Otis's Gooch. Now, could you imagine working for WWE, going up to Daniel Bryan and saying, hello, Daniel Bryan, I'm a person you work with. Can I film you in the shower? <laughs> could you imagine doing that and then Daniel Bryan saying, yeah, buddy, come in the shower with me. Film me all you want. I mean, of course, the imagery we're seeing there is very powerful. Look at all them scars, but the whole scenario... Bit weird, isn't it? And then we have Michael Cole calling what's happened between Otis and M Mandy at the Royal Rumble. The latest chapter in this budding relationship. My God. Oh, wow. I hope I can be in this relationship. Lonely man, Michael. But Michael Cole decided to say this moment after we saw the actual latest chapter in this budding relationship where Otis scored a date with Mandy on Valentine's Day. And I was left wondering what the hell Michael Cole must have been doing when he should have been watching that backstage segment. Just like my best friend Otis, I'm coming! Oh, God. So next up we have Corey Graves outlandishly claiming that Shinsuke Nakamura had no intentions of letting the Intercontinental Championship go. And I was left asking one thing and that is Corey Graves, are you sure pal? Because now he's lost the dreaded noose that is the Intercontinental Championship in the year 2020 in WWE. Surely Shinsuke Nakamura will be booked to wrestle more and in turn he'll be making more of them sweet ducats Corey Graves. Graphics man get big dick tony on that graphic he is there as well and while we're at it wwe why don't you have the brilliant idea of just giving this brand new stable a name i thought surely that when you put a stable together on tv a name would be the first thing you come up with no no And then we have Corey Graves calling the Intercontinental Championship one of the most prestigious championships in all of WWE. And as we stand here in the year 2020, after the past few years, that title has gone through. That is like me standing here in the year 2020 telling you that George Hackenschmidt is a promising up-and-comer. It was true once upon a time, but it's not now. And I've got to make this a WTF moment because since he's been good, every single championship match Braun Strowman has had, Braun Strowman has lost. I still can't get over 1F5 defeating him at No Mercy 2017. What a mess that was. But now he's won one, and let me tell you, it's about bloody time. Hopefully Braun Strowman with this Intercontinental Championship will be booked 25 to 30 times more than Shinsuke Nakamura is per year. And also, I hope they let him do the things that made us fall in love with him way back in the day when he was feuding with Roman Reigns and whatnot. And then Big Braun went and did a big Billy Bull burp. <laughs> I mean a big Billy Goldberg when he twatted himself in the head when he didn't have to, making himself bleed his own blood. What a silly goose, eh? And next up we have Naomi, who, by the way, for my money, has the best entrance attire thing in the game today. That LED goldfish was tickety-boo, wasn't it? But she claimed that Bailey has never, ever defeated her. No, no. Now, I did a bit of a Google and I found out that January the 3rd, 2016 in Corpus Christi, Texas. That's the first take of that. I promise. Bailey defeated Naomi at a random house show that meant nothing until now. Made a great mistake. It's lonely at the top, Corey Graves exclaims at the top of his lungs just after Naomi, pure smashed, Bailey in, in the face and that leg, who? Newcastle upon Tyne and that eye. And quite frankly, I was left pondering just how Corey Graves would know about such a thing. <laughs> what an arsehole. The throne is there, the men are there, but big baldy bastard Baron Corbin with his cape sort of half fallen off is walking down to the ring. If you were in the arena for Friday Night Smackdown, let me know what happened there, because I'm interested. Is that, is that Michael Pierce his? It's not. It's his biological son, Dolph Ziggler. 
But what's that hat, Dolph? What are you these days? And then we fast forward all the way through that main event match and we get to the pièce de résistance of the night. All night we are told that somebody will eat dog food. Big baldy bastard Baron Corbin is pinned. Big baldy bastard Baron Corbin is cuffed up. But big baldy bastard Baron Corbin doesn't actually eat any dog food. WWE promoting something, they're not delivering the thing they promoted. That's the first time that has ever happened in the history of that illustrious company. Honestly. And then we've also got to end it with the sheer amount of times that Michael Cole screamed at the top of his little vintage lungs. Dog food, dog food, dog food, dog food, dog food, dog food, dog food. I couldn't be asked to count. It was a lot. And quite frankly, after hearing Michael Cole say dog food that many times, only one scenario is acceptable in my disturbed mind. Vince McMahon had to have been backstage with an actual gun pointed towards the face of Michael Cole's wife or Michael Cole's dog. Michael Cole had hit a quota of dog food. Otherwise, one of them got a bullet right in their face. You can tell Mel to that. It's all true. And that's it for the WTF moments from Friday Night Smackdown. As I said, it was a really fast-paced show. A lot of stuff happened. But at the end of the night, you were questioning what you just saw. So make of that what you will. Ta-da. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. And if you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can play us to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. Hit subscribe and join us.